Bitcoin is down over 7% since last week, and at the time of this video is breaking down from this $55,000 to $65,000 range we've been bouncing around since about June, possibly headed down to this 50k price point we haven't seen since back in February of this year. Ouch. Crypto isn't the only sector tumbling this week. Fear is sweeping the broader financial markets, with indices like the S&P, NASDAQ, and Dow falling. Stocks like NVIDIA, Apple, and Amazon falling, as well as ETFs. Now, historically, looking at Bitcoin's monthly returns over the years, we are usually wrecked in September and up in October. So we could be in for another wrecked timber before and October this time around if history rhymes or repeats itself. All while weird events continue to unfold as governments ramp up efforts to destroy free speech, privacy, and financial freedom. With their attacks on Elon Musk and his refusal to censor information on X, the recent arrest of Pavel Durov, the CEO of global communications app Telegram, which launched TON, a decentralized and open computer internet network with various components, the continuation of Chokepoint 2.0. What's going on? How should we prepare as crypto investors for what could possibly happen the rest of 2024 in the short term, as well as the long term into Q4 of 2025 this cycle? Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and welcome to another episode of Crypto This Week. Let's explore the latest news stories affecting the markets, as well as the state of the global macro environment at large. Please be sure to check out our sponsors, Ledger, Tangem, and Robotic Crypto Trader. Invest in premium crypto wallets with extra security layers like Ledger Stacks and Ledger Flex, available for the best discount on the market specifically for our community that comes with $10 of free Bitcoin. Diversify your investment strategy by using Robotic Crypto Trader, an AI-driven trading bot that connects to our Coinbase account and trades 24-7 for daily profits while we sleep. Learn more by checking out this walkthrough video by clicking on the link above. And invest in a Tangem wallet, the most affordable and easiest crypto wallet to use and set up on the market right now, perfect for beginners and advanced users alike, to diversify our crypto among different wallets with different technology. So scroll down and use links below to redeem any special offers they have for us. Sweet. So why did the market dip on Friday? Very simple. Markets do not like uncertainty, and what the markets were expecting from the August jobs report did not pan out. Not only did it come back weaker than expected, there were some mixed signals or perceived inconsistencies, which further stokes feelings of uncertainty in the markets. This headline basically sums up the recent dip. The jobs report leaves traders in limbo by failing to settle the debate about size of the Fed rate cut or lack thereof. So in the short term, keep this state in mind. September 18th, that is when the next FOMC or Federal Open Market Committee meeting is, where Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will announce one of three things, a decrease in interest rates, no change in interest rates, or an increase in interest rates. A decrease in interest rates is most likely to happen with the market waffling between a 25 basis point cut or a 50 basis point cut. A pause in interest rates is on the table, yet less likely to happen, and an increase is very unlikely to happen. And checking out what people think on Polymarket, the world's largest prediction market at the time of this video, most people are betting on a 25 basis point decrease. My random wild guess is we get a 50 basis point decrease on September 18th. And one of the main reasons is that any interest rate cuts before the election would likely boost the economy, which by proxy would increase Kamala Harris's odds at winning the US presidential election. Mainstream media wants Harris to win and they are doing all they can to influence that income, which is why Trump warned Powell not to cut rates before the election. Yet, markets are still expecting them. Let me know what you think in the comments below. The upcoming September 18th Fed meeting is the last one before the US presidential and congressional elections. Another huge source of uncertainty, and especially the cryptocurrency markets, given Trump's boisterous pro-crypto stance versus Harris's recent anti-crypto actions that have been speaking louder than her silence on crypto matters, indicating a more than likely continuation of Biden's anti-crypto agenda. Maybe we will learn more about Harris's administration's intentions with crypto at another crucial event this month. ABC News releases rules for September 10th debate between Harris and Trump. The debate will be held at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia, which at the time of this video is just a few days away. Will crypto come up in the debate or not? Let me know in the comments below. My random wild guess is no, because it wasn't brought up in the Trump versus Biden debate, and it surprisingly wasn't even brought up during Elon Musk's interview with Trump. Either way, we should consider crypto not being a talking point as confirmation we are still super early in this new exciting technology with a lot of long-term growth potential. Because even though politicians may not be talking about it pre-election, their lobbyists, donors, and corporate cronies are making big moves to try and ensure their survival by front-running the inevitable incoming global financial revolution. Check it out.
MasterCard launches Euro-dominated non-custodial Bitcoin debit card. MasterCard has launched a Euro debit card, enabling direct spending of Bitcoin and crypto from non-custodial wallets at its over 100 million merchants. The move reflects MasterCard's expanding efforts to bridge Bitcoin with its traditional payments network. MasterCard is a payments titan serving nearly 3 billion customers in over 210 countries. This latest integration reflects the company's growing efforts to bridge Bitcoin with its sprawling traditional payments infrastructure. We are providing consumers who want to spend their digital assets with an easy, reliable, and secure way to do so. Anywhere MasterCard is accepted, said Christian Rao, Senior Vice President of MasterCard's crypto unit. The card allows spending Bitcoin and other crypto simply by connecting a non-custodial wallet. Users avoid selling Bitcoin and crypto on an exchange before spending, maintaining full ownership. However, MasterCard's card does have fees, including a 1.6 euro issuance fee, 1 euro monthly maintenance fee, and a 0.95% transaction fee. Nonetheless, by supporting non-custodial wallets, MasterCard addresses a major pain point and grants users the flexibility to directly control their Bitcoin and crypto. The move caters to a growing audience preferring self-hosted wallets over centralized exchanges. And why is there a growing audience like us that prefer self-hosted wallets over centralized exchanges? Well, one, using our own self-hosted crypto wallets, especially hardware wallets like Tandem and Ledger devices, they're the only secure way we can 100% completely own and control our digital assets. Because when we keep our Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and other digital assets on centralized exchanges, we have an account that basically has its own contract saying we own XYZ crypto assets, and the account is subject to bans, seizure by the government. If the exchange gets hacked and goes bankrupt, we lose our investments with little to no recourse. When the markets and trading heat up, sometimes withdrawals and trading are halted, preventing us from taking advantage of opportunities that arise during active volatile markets. And another huge reason more and more people are opting to self-custody with Tandem and Ledger wallets that will become more apparent sooner than later, especially in the West, like the US, especially if there is a Harris victory, is the capital controls that will be instituted alongside Operation Choke Point 2.0. Because as more and more countries dump the US dollar around the world, all of those US dollars circulating around the world will start to flood back to the domestic United States, which will further exacerbate inflation, could send us into hyperinflation scenarios. And one of the main goals the government will implement is preventing its citizens from being able to exit their system of control, their currency, the US dollar, by implementing a series of capital controls. Let's explore what that kind of looks like and why we need to start preparing yesterday to ensure we have some freedom and valuable assets outside of their system of control by first taking the most important step if we haven't. As crypto investors, secure your digital assets with different hardware wallets to diversify technological risk. Tandem Wallet is a set of three cards that works just like a set of three house keys or car keys that function as backups that only takes a minute or two to set up. They come in a sleek matte black design or our custom limited edition three pillars of blockchain set featuring three different colored cards with cool blockchain inspired designs. And Ledger offers premium crypto hardware wallet options with some extra security features like Ledger Stacks and their brand new Ledger Flex devices. They're the first of their kind as a new crypto wallet category, which is a secure touchscreen featuring a full keyboard and keypad, making it super user-friendly. Both overall are really unique physical devices with breakthrough technology that are great additions to our crypto wallet arsenal. Watch a full review of them in this video, and Ledger is offering our community the best discount available on the market that comes with $10 worth of free Bitcoin for a limited time. So be sure to scroll down and use links below to redeem any special offers they have for us. Cool. So it's time to get serious because the world is changing faster than we ever could have imagined. Before we know it, it will be almost unrecognizable. Governments want to destroy free speech, privacy, and our ability to achieve financial freedom. Why? Because they want to control the global narrative via mainstream media without any dissent. And most importantly for them, most detrimental for us, they need to control capital. The US is in massive amount of debt, financial repression is coming, and capital controls will be implemented before the sovereign debt crisis spirals out of control. Because there are only a few ways governments try to get out of a sovereign debt crisis. One, pay more money to inflate the debt away. And two, implement capital controls. And the sad part about those efforts is it never works. Not once has it been successful, it always fails. People from Argentina and Venezuela know this and have been through this, this concept that is very new to most people that live in the West. The government can and will change rules and policies overnight to essentially trap us into their failing system leaving us with no real control or ownership over our own money or assets like real estate, stocks, bonds, 
ETFs, Bitcoin ETFs, gold ETFs, certificates to precious metals like gold and silver. Not a basically they will completely control the flow of money, the flow of money in and out of financial instruments. The framework and infrastructure is already in place for most assets, and it's quickly closing in on cryptocurrencies with Operation Choke Point 2.0, which we've been discussing on the channel for over a year now. So the only options that we have to escape and operate outside of their oppressive system of control is to buy and own physical gold held outside of the country and buy and hold Bitcoin with self-custody crypto wallets like Tandrum and Ledger devices. Some people ask, why can't we just increase taxes on the rich to pay off the debt? Well, it just doesn't add up. Look at the math. If we took all of the Forbes 400 richest people in the world and clawed back all of their wealth, something like $4 trillion, that would run the government for seven months. And if you took 100% of their earnings, about $5 billion, that would run the government for 34 days. Yeah, that gets us nowhere. We have a massive spending problem, like we explored a couple of weeks ago. If you lined up the US national debt, $35 trillion, $1 bills with them end to end from the surface of the earth, it would reach past Neptune and almost Pluto. So at the end of the day, here's the deal. Money is a system of control. Taxation is theft. There isn't a Republican or Democratic party. The US is a one party system, the business party. They want us to hate each other, hate the rich, hate the poor, hate different ethnicities, hate different party affiliations. It's designed to keep everyone poor, dumb, divided, scared, angry, materialistic, and distracted from the fact that Congress has the ability to create interest-free currency to the country. Meanwhile, via a secret meeting organized by JP Morgan, a private central bank was created, the Federal Reserve. And here's how the scam works. The US Treasury creates a bond, Treasury bills debt, and the Federal Reserve buys them with money they literally type into a database out of thin air and they charge us interest on it. Why don't we learn how money in the financial system works in school? Because it's a scam. Why don't we learn about taxes in school? Because it's a scam. Some potential solutions we've discussed on the channel over the years, the government will never entertain because they work for big businesses and global elites and corporate personhood, dismantle the Federal Reserve, revert the US dollar back to an equity-based currency and in taxation. See, a common misconception that keeps people at each other's throats with wealth disparity is money that someone else earns or has doesn't take away from anyone else's. We must understand that the financial system is a rigged game and play accordingly to break free from enslavement. Because our education and financial systems are designed to make us slaves. They want us working all the time, barely getting by financially, kept barely alive as long as possible, all for one goal, cheap slaves and profit centers for big corporations. Politics is a distraction. It's a fugazi. It's a show. It's all propaganda. It's everywhere. And it is all designed to influence our mindset to accept this authoritarian hierarchical structure of society where we operate off of a belief system to trust the experts. Don't ask questions, trust the experts. Trust experts in foreign policy, trust experts in climate change and health, science, finance. It doesn't matter who's paying them. Don't be skeptical. No need for a critical thinking or to do your own research. They are experts. So when it comes to how money is created in the US and how it works, don't take it from me. Take it from the experts, like the chair of the Council of Economic Advisors, the main agency that advises the U.S. government on economic policy. The U.S. government can't go bankrupt because we can print our own money. It obviously begs the question, why exactly are we borrowing in a currency that we print ourselves? I'm waiting for someone to stand up and say, why do we borrow our own currency in the first place? Like you said, they print the dollar, so why, why does the government even borrow? Well, um... The, uh, so the, I mean, again, some of this stuff gets, some of the language that the, MN, some of the language and concepts are just confusing. I mean, the government definitely prints money and it definitely lends that money, which is why uh, the government definitely prints money and then it lends that money by, uh, by selling bonds. Uh, is that what they do? They, they, um, they, yeah, they, they, um, they sell bonds. Yeah, they sell bonds, right? Because so they sell bonds and people buy the bonds and lend them the money. Yeah. So a lot of times, a lot of times, at least in my year with, with MMT, the, the language and the concepts can be kind of unnecessarily confusing, but there is no question that the government prints money and then it uses that money to, um, uh, 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 so, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just, I don't, I can't really talk. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what they're talking about. Like, cause it's like, the government clearly prints money, it does it all the time, and it clearly borrows. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this debt and deficit conversation. So I don't think there's anything confusing there. 
He either got the same education we all did and doesn't understand how the game works, or he knows exactly what is going on and is playing his role. It's getting wild out there, so pay attention, stay aware, spread awareness, and get prepared. Awesome. If you would like to watch a step-by-step -step guide on setting up Tangent Wallet and how it works, check out this video. If you would like to watch a full review of Ledger Stacks and Ledger Flex devices to see them in action, check out this video. And to get a three-year license for the robotic crypto trader at a huge discount, click on the link on the screen. Like and subscribe for more. Be safe out there.